Maybe you want to be a chef. Maybe you want to be a dancer. I don't know what you want to do. I'm not sure my boss is going to like that. <laughs> <laughs> not too but you do need to follow your passions. Right. Virtually all of us have fantasized about what we would purchase if we win a million dollar lottery. Pictures of raving Ferraris, sunny private islands, raging yacht parties often come to mind. Billionaires and millionaires often make purchases we sometimes ignore as even an option. Would we purchase the Washington Post, or an extravagant private jet, or a clock that would count for 10,000 years, or a couple miles underground in the middle of nowhere in Texas? Well, if you're Jeff Bezos, you do all those things and more. By now, you surely acknowledge the bold, smiling face, and you'd probably have a couple of dozen Amazon boxes lying around your house that you meant to recycle weeks ago. That little company led to Jeff Bezos being the richest man on Earth, with an insane fortune of $113.9 billion. To put that into perspective, if he spends $20 every second, it will take him 177 years, 2 months, and 29 days to spend all of his cash. But Jeff is spending more than $20 per day. Though he is widely known for driving a Honda Accord, Jeff is far from frugal. Today, we're going to take a look at how Jeff Bezos spends his crazy amount of resources. From the businesses he buys, to almost all of us wanting his mansion, to the jets he flies. If you're Jeff Bezos, you can snatch up much more than one miserly haul. Try three villas, a DC townhouse, and a massive ranch. Jeff Bezos owns so much real estate, he's the 25th largest landowner in the United States, rivaling forestry companies and even farms. Jeff's first significant estate purchase lies in medieval Washington. A few miles away from the wealthy CEOs of Washington, including Microsoft owner Bill Gates. Seeing that Jeff and his wife at that time, Mackenzie, put down $10 million for a five-bedroom house, 20,600-square-foot home on a 5.3-acre waterfront. The apartment includes a pool and many posh features you can expect in a mansion. But that wasn't enough. Seven years later, they purchased the neighboring home, an 8,300-square-foot home with an additional five bedrooms and four bathrooms that cost the couple over $50 million. On top of that, the home was renovated in 2010 for a whopping $28 million. Little is known about the interior of the two houses, but there is an odd feeling that there is an Alexa in each room. This $88 million investment is 88 times the average American will make in their lifetime. But Jeff is anything but ordinary. He returned to purchase the most substantial home in Washington, D.C. for $23 million. The property is a 100-year-old former textile mill with 25 bathrooms, 11 bedrooms, three kitchens, and a massive ballroom. When Jeff wants to escape the D.C. traffic, he can slap on his cowboy boots and experience a little serving charm at his 30,000-acre ranch in Texas. His ranch is worth millions of dollars, having recently been renovated and home to Blue Origin, Jeff's space exploration company. However, it was mostly bought to give his children some playing space during the summer. Jeff also owns a $24.45 million mansion compound in Beverly Hills. He chooses to buy one mansion and then skips a neighboring one for $12.9 million, making a monster property worth $37.35 million. The property has 13 bedrooms and 11 baths between the houses, giving them quite a powerful kingdom to roam around. However, one Beverly Hills home wasn't enough for Jeff. In February of 2020, he reportedly purchased the most expensive home ever. Sold in Los Angeles, the Warner Estate, it's estimated that Jeff paid a startling $165 million for the estate, topping the record for not just Los Angeles, but also California. The Warner Estate was built in 1937 by Jack Warner, one of the founders of Warner Brothers. Since then, it's undergone several renovations and passed through several wealthy hands. Dimensions are 13,600 square feet with two large guest houses, two pools, a spa, a tennis court, a motor court with gas pumps, and even a nine-hole golf course. The home's interior has eight bedrooms, nine bathrooms, a movie theater, a bar, and fitted with floorings that were once owned by Napoleon himself. Naturally, Jeff needs a way to jump mansion to mansion, and there's no way he is stacking his family in his Honda Accord. Jeff owns a Gulfstream G650ER, which costs a whopping $65 million. The aircraft has three living areas, the most notable of which is a lounge area with two couches, a retractable flat-screen television, and a built-in wine cooler. There is also a back bedroom and a dining area with the most convenient seats on the planet. 
flying in one plane will make it hard to ever fly in a regular aircraft again. Since he started dating Lauren Sanchez, Jeff has been spotted off the coast of Italy on super yachts and in Wimbledon. He recently pitched a lavish week-long birthday party for Lauren, which covers a party with high-profile celebrities like Orlando Bloom and Katy Perry. The birthday week ended with a romantic trip to Bath on a private yacht. On these trips, there is no doubt that Jeff has spent more on a single toast than most people spend on a week of food. He's known for picking unique foods on the menu, often opting for things like an octopus for breakfast. He's reportedly said that if there's something he's never had on the menu, he has to get it. Aside from fancy meals, expensive planes, and lavish properties, there are a few other places where the wealthy can spend their money, mainly on other business ventures. And when you're as wealthy as Jeff, you can put your money in some other businesses. Jeff Bezos has invested in the Long How Foundation, a nonprofit organization based out of San Francisco. The company is building a 500 foot tall clock that runs on day and night thermal cycles, and it's meant to take once a year for 10,000 years. The clock is built on Jeff's ranch property buried underground within a mountain, and it's intended to symbolize long-term thinking. Of course, it was also Blue Origin, which is Jeff's space exploration company. The company focuses on vertical takeoff and landing vehicles with an introduction that would allow humans to colonize space. The company is mostly funded using Jeff's money. He has been quoted saying he plans to use his Amazon fortune on space exploration, which he tries back to his fascination watching NASA missions as a child. Although he's on the run for becoming the world's first trillionaire, Bezos is said to often prefer driving himself around in a used Honda Accord, which is valued in the low five figures. A profile CBS's Bob Simon did of Bezos in 1999 for 60 Minutes, resurfaced by GeekWire, showed Bezos driving the car. When Simon asked, what's with the Honda? After a laugh, Bezos replied, this is a perfectly good car. However, despite this inspiring modesty, Bezos is the proud owner of the stunning sports car collection. Number one, Ferrari Pininfarina Sergio, $3 million. Winner of an auto design award, the Pininfarina boasts a perfect balance between the advanced technology of its man-machine interface and its refined handcrafted details, all essential elements of a signature Ferrari sports car. Number two, Bugatti Veyron Mansory, $3 million. Integrating traditional craftsmanship and hand-picked materials, the limited edition Veyron Mansory is the perfect combination of luxury and expert engineering. Number three, W Motors Lycan Hypersport, $3.4 million. The first hypercar created by W Motors took center stage in Universal Studios' Furious 7. It was featured as the hero car in the movie and is the most expensive car ever to be featured in the Fast and the Furious franchise. As you can see, Jeff Bezos can spend his money however he pleases. So what would you do if you have a fortune like Jeff Bezos?